a welcome to the Promised Land Missionary Baptist Church adult Sunday school class for August the 2nd. We'll be looking at the, the marriage of the Lamb uh, as we study our scriptures today in Revelation chapter 19. And, and I'd like to go with, to the Lord with a word of prayer as we begin. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to open your word. Father, we pray your Holy Spirit might uh, enlighten us, O Father, to what you would have us to glean from your scripture study this day. We thank you for our church family, Father. We lift them up in prayer. Father, we, we pray for our nation. Uh, we even pray for the world, Lord, as we uh, struggle through this COVID-19 periods of time. And we thank you, O God, for the promises that you have for us in your scriptures. And we thank you, Lord, that indeed our hope is in uh, heaven and it's not on this earth. Father, forgive us our sins where we fail thee. In Jesus' name I pray. As we begin our study in Revelation chapter 19 today, I want to remind you, uh, last week we looked at Revelation chapter 18 and the fall of Babylon, uh, and the great fall of Babylon, if you will. Our uh, quarterly did not end with the final verses in chapter 18, and that was where the angel threw a great millstone into the sea, and uh, uh, the impact that that was going to have is going to be so devastating that uh, the world would be changed. We've talked about the great earthquake, the three woes. We, we've talked about how the uh, topography of Jerusalem and Israel will be changed. And, and remember, even Jesus said when these things happen, uh, don't go down back into the house, run to the hills, flee to the hills. And I, I mentioned about the earthquake and the tectonic plates, how they might move and the tsunamis that would take place because of that great earthquake. Uh, all the destruction that's going to take place and fall... Uh, including the fall of Babylon, uh, which was representative of, of false religions. Uh, all of commerce in the world would be uh, cut off. There will be no, the, the uh, Antichrist and the false prophet have initiated the, the uh, mark of the beast, and there will be no commerce without buy, no buying and selling without the mark of the beast. Well, all that's going to change here. Uh, we, we looked at last week at the evil side, and John's looking here, I think, uh, simultaneously at, at different aspects of the scripture. You can only write one at a time. And so as these, the fall of Babylon is discussed here last week, uh, the joyous occasion of the marriage supper of the Lamb is, I think, happening simultaneously. So the evil is being destroyed and the good is being ushered in uh, through the marriage supper of the Lamb in chapter 19. And so uh, while the misery and the suffering that takes place upon the earth uh, John is also describing here the great joy. And I really cannot uh, emphasize enough the great joy that takes place here during the marriage supper of the Lamb. Remember, the, our author points out to us that the, uh, um, the scriptures here are indicative of the true marriage and the, uh, for the Hebrew children and how uh, the parents oftentimes selected the the bride for the uh, groom uh, uh, there was a betrothal period and then uh, at some point later much years later uh, perhaps uh, there was a, a wedding ceremony and a uh, wedding feast and then uh, the the uh, marriage was consummated at that time and so in our scripture today where God made a promise to all of us that uh, uh, there would be judgment for sin. There, there'd be a time when Christ would truly reign on earth again and uh, that God's will would be done was Jesus' prayer. And we're looking at that fulfillment of those scriptures in our, as we look at the marriage of the Lamb today. So uh, there's going to, this happy and joyous time is beyond anything that we can imagine. Heaven, the entirety of heaven will participate in this marriage feast of the marriage supper of the lamb and in verses one through four and it says and after these things meaning the fall of babylon fi false religion is done away with all those things that evil things that are, have been taking place on earth they're now going to be taken away judged by god and taken away and john says after these things i heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power unto the lord our god now who here we find people in heaven, and uh, there's some discussion about who these people are. Of course, uh, the the scripture, the saying here is "Alleluia and salvation, and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God." And remember, God's people are the nation of Israel. Now we'll find over in our uh, further studies in the scriptures that uh, all of heaven does uh, declare 
God's glory here. But perhaps these are the Jewish people uh, being identified. And John's uh, stating here that even they will come to the realization through the uh, uh, three angels that declared uh, the gospel message in the air and the 144,000 Jewish witnesses. Uh, though the, the nation of Israel will return to God. God will put uh, in their heart that they will be believers in the latter days, last days. And so uh, perhaps John here is talking about the Jewish people when he describes these people in heaven. Of course, they're going, they have to be saved. They have to acknowledge Jesus, just as you and I have to acknowledge Jesus as God's only Son and, and the way of salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord of our God, Lord our God. So the, these are God's people, uh, and uh, their worship is going to take place. In verse 2 it says, For true and, and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. We looked last week at the, at the fall of Babylon, uh, here described as the great whore. And in fact, we, the uh, angels prayed uh, a double portion to her of the iniquity and the sin that uh, she showered upon the people of the earth. Uh, the angels themselves asked for a double portion of revenge upon uh, the city of Babylon, false religion, if you will. And so uh, we can be assured that here, because... Uh, God's judgments are true, and they are righteous, and here he is avenging the blood of his servants at the hand of uh, false religion, if, we'll, if you will, through the, all the ages time past. And verse 3 says, and again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the, this smoke is a, a visible reminder to the people throughout the coming ages that uh, the Babylon has fallen, false religion is done away with, and that smoke will rise forever and ever. And while uh, they'll, people will be, uh, the saved will be in heaven during the millennial reign, they'll, I think they'll have this visible reminder of this smoke rising up forever and ever to the fact that uh, false religion has been judged by a true and righteous God. In verse 4 it says, And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen and Hallelujah. Remember, uh, I, as I mentioned, this wedding feast is reminiscent of a marriage ceremony and for the nation of Israel. And uh, the, oftentimes it took a week or more for this marriage ceremony to uh, be fulfilled. And it was a great time, uh, great joy and great happiness, and, and it involved the entire community. And oftentimes here, uh, even these four and 20 elders that we saw in the beginning of our study of Revelation uh, and the four beasts, they fall down and they worship God that sat on the throne saying amen and hallelujah. Amen, of course, is I agree. And there, there are four instances here of hallelujah. Uh, the translation for hallelujah is hallelujah that we often use today. And uh, here we find four references to hallelujah in these scriptures that we're going to look at today. And so these four and 20 elders and the four beasts fall down and worship. And in, in verse 1 it says, uh, the great voice from much people in heaven saying hallelujah. And then if we continue on over into the section number two, we find in Revelation chapter five, verses uh, through eight, five through eight, it says, and a voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God, all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. And uh, uh, while uh, the entire focus in heaven is going to be the, the praise of an almighty God. And uh, here the, the voice from heaven from the throne is saying praise our God and it includes every, each and every one of the people in heaven and it says all those that fear him both small and great and there, there's no distinction in heaven between uh, small and great and so we find here that each and every one of them's responsibility uh, at the marriage supper of the lamb is the purpose is to praise God in verse 6 it says and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and the voice of mighty thunderings. And th this is a uh, voice is innumerable, so loud and uh, so uh, awesome that uh, it's described here as mighty thunder and as a voice of many waters, like, like a, a roaring sound of a waterfall, if you will. And what are they saying? They're saying, Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now, what, what is omnipotence? Omnipotence is uh, all-powerful. God is in control of the earth. He is all-powerful. And while Satan has uh, rule of the air here 
but prior to this fall of Babylon, uh, we're looking in the last days now of, of the uh, earth as we know it, before the new heaven and the new earth are uh, descending from God. And so here they are describing the Lord God omnipotent. He is all powerful. Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet, uh, Babylon, the whore, the uh, uh, false religions of the world, all sin is going to be taken away at this time because God is powerful and his judgments are true, the scriptures tell us. And so these are all, uh, eventually their home will be the lake of fire where they'll be burnt with fire and brimstone forever and ever. In verse 7 it says, let us be glad and rejoice. And, and uh, I mentioned earlier how this is such a happy and joyous occasion is the marriage ceremony and here the marriage of the lamb in heaven is the happiest thing that we'll ever uh, encounter as saved people it says let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is coming all throughout all eternity God's plan has been taking place and it's being fulfilled here and the ultimate conclusion of the fact is that uh, God is in control and he will reign on earth just as he reigns in heaven and uh, there will be no sin no sorrow no sadness and everything will be under God's will and God's control as it has never been before on earth. Now, it's always been like that in heaven. But remember when Satan rebelled and his angels, he was cast to the earth and uh, because that none of that can take place in heaven. And it says in the latter part of verse 7, and his wife have made herself ready. And uh, his wife is the saved of, the, of all uh, times past and present. And that wife, the wife here is described as the saved people uh, that do accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Before you need a Savior, you have to realize that you're a sinner. And so it, the fact that uh, uh, these people in heaven have realized that they are sin in their life, the consequences of sin is death, the Bible tells us. But God has provided a way for a man to be redeemed, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, here... The, those redeemed of the, by the blood of the Lamb are described here as a wife relationship, and Jesus is the groom, if you will. In verse 8 it says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Now notice in verse 8 that uh, she is granted. Uh, it's not the things that uh, the wife or the saved have done. It's the things that, uh, that are attributed to her. It's just like uh, the blood of Jesus Christ is what offers us salvation and, and a right relationship with God. And her, her, her clean linen and fine linen and clean and white, this is granted to her. It's through God's will that these things take place. It's nothing that she has done, just like, it's like, just like our righteousness is as filthy rags. It is Jesus and, and what he has done that it allows us uh, to have a holy and righteous relationship with the Lord God who is holy and righteous. And so she is granted here, it says in verse 8, and, and this fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And throughout eternity, uh, Satan has been, his desire is for all of mankind to worship him instead of the true God. And uh, his desire is to disrupt God's plan. And God's plan is for Jesus to return uh, the millennial reign, the battle of Armageddon, the millennial reign, the new heaven and the new earth. And Satan has done everything in his power, uh, which is incomplete. God is omnipotent. He has complete and total power. And while it, oftentimes it seems that the evil is winning, remember that God is in control of what goes on here uh, in earth and in heaven as well. It says, uh, God reigns in the hearts of those who belong to him and, and submit themselves to him. And the kingdoms of this world will be destroyed. Uh, the, the new kingdom will be a heavenly kingdom that will, where Jesus will be declared Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And that's why our hope and our anticipation and expectation is that that day will come when Jesus returns. We'll look next week at uh, Jesus' return on that white horse. Remember, these things are happening simultaneously. We looked at, at the fall of Babylon. We, we're looking now at the marriage of the Lamb the happy side of the uh, uh, flip side of the evil things that we looked at in chapter 18. We're looking at the happy side for the saved here in chapter 19. And we'll discuss the uh, marriage of the Lamb again in chapters 20 and 21. The spirit of prophecy is our third section 
uh, of our quarterly today. And it says in verse 9 through 10, it says, And he saith unto me, uh, this is the angel saying to John, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. There are several references in the book of Revelation to the true sayings of God. There are seven of them, actually. And uh, our author points those out to us, and the leader's guide does too. So I'm not going to uh, repeat those to you. But here, the true saying of God is that those who are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb are blessed. And indeed, th this uh, calling, uh, God calls each and every man. Uh, his God's desire is that none should be lost, that none should be destroyed, that all sh should come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so here, those who have accepted that call uh, have, are now uh, taking place and participating in the marriage supper of the Lamb. The happy and joyous thing, most happy and joyous thing that ever happens in, in heaven itself. In verse 10 it says, And I fell at his feet. Uh, John fell at the angel's feet to worship him. And he said unto me, notice, he says, See thou do it not. And why would the angel say, not, Don't do that? Uh, because we are to worship God and God alone. Uh, the Ten Commandments tell us not to bow before any graven image or bow to anyone. We are to bow to God and God alone. He says, the angel says, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. He's, he is an angel. That's true. Angels have their place in, in the worship of God and the service of God. And we as humans have our place in the service and worship of God also. They're different. Uh, now, while they both are to worship God, uh, we as humans uh, uh, have the responsibility to worship and glorify God and God alone. The angel says here, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What, what is life about? Life is about our relationship with the holy and righteous God through his son, Jesus Christ. All, this, all the Bible, all the scriptures, all the prophecies, they all center around Jesus and our relationship with Jesus and his relationship with God. And as we look at these scriptures here in the book of Revelation, we have God's word to us, and these word is true. Uh, the more and more I study uh, the scriptures, I realize that every word is important. Uh, every phrase, it all has significance, and, and we shouldn't change any of it because it is the truth, and the truth never changes. The truth is always the truth. And so here we find the angel telling John, don't worship angels. We shouldn't worship angels either. The fact is that we should worship God and his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, God's will will be done eventually on earth. Now, while we suffer through COVID uh, uh, infections and, and miseries and even deaths, uh, those things will be done away with in God's due time. Next week, we're going to be looking at the coming of Christ and his glory, riding that white horse, uh, being declared the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, the battle of Armageddon will take place before the millennial reign, the great white throne judgment. And so uh, then we have a great expectation for eternity. And uh, as we look at the marriage supper of the Lamb, I pray that you have made a conscious decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that his blood might be uh, what redeems you to a holy and righteous God, that you would ask forgiveness for your sins, accept Jesus and, uh, and uh, what he has done for us here on this earth and what is coming to those who love and fear God. And with that, I'm going to close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your holy scriptures. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to open them. Father, we just pray that uh, as we study your word, Father, that we might glean them, take them to heart, O oh God, that we might adapt our lives to your true and holy and righteous life that you desire for each and every one of us. Father, we pray for the lost. We pray that they might be saved, God, O oh God. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Thank you.